Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! It's a party used to dealing with scandal. In recent years, UKIP has survived an almost constant leadership battle and even the odd punch-up. But today, it's lost nearly half its top team as, one by one, they resigned in protest at their leader. Henry Bolton, just four months into the job, has faced repeated calls to quit over racist texts sent by his ex-girlfriend. So far, he's staying put, though. We're expecting to hear from him within the next few moments when we'll hear if that changes at all. First, let's take a look at who's gone. Top 10 UKIP figures have resigned in the past two weeks, starting with the party's Equalities and Disabilities spokesperson, um, Star Anderton. The dominoes really started to fall last night after Deputy Leader and MEP Margot Parker quit the party and called for Henry Bolton to step down as leader. Eight UKIP cabinet members have followed her lead, including four more MEPs. Jason Farrell is in Folkestone for us now. Hello to you, Jason. He's likely to make a statement shortly. Do we have any idea what he might say? Hi, Kay. No, we don't. I'm just uh, stepping away from the camera at the moment because we are expecting him to walk down this drive that you can see ahead of me. And uh, he will come out of here, stand in front of our microphones, and we will hear what he has to say. I tried to get an indication. One UK spokesperson, or, or let's say advisor, told me that he wasn't going to resign, but there are other rumours that he might. So I don't really know. I mean, obviously, we've seen that the local government, the education, the trade, and immigration spokesman have all resigned, along with the deputy leader and assistant deputy leader. So. You, you might say, well, what's left of a party for him to remain in charge of? He's certainly losing a lot of his top brass uh, around him. People seem to be deserting him as a leader. If he plans to carry on, uh, it might be costly for the party. But then again, it's also going to be costly to have another campaign and decide who does lead it. I spoke to Nigel Farage earlier today, uh, who said he had no intention of leading uh, UKIP again. So I think that would be the dream ticket for people for him to come back as he was always the big talisman and personality of the party. Many say the party doesn't really exist without him. <laughs> and uh, so it has proven it's been very difficult to replace. Obviously, we saw Diane James lasting just three weeks when she was elected back in 2000. Yes. And 16. Paul Nuttall, elected in November 2016, quit in June. Uh, Henry Bolton has been elected yes. in September, 29th of, of September course, yes. last year. Of and course. now he's, of course, facing these uh, calls to resign as well. Um, so we just don't know. It's, it's possible, I mean, that he could try and stay on and wait for the uh, party to have a vote on this. Um, the National Executive Committee has backed a vote of no confidence. That didn't seem to be enough to get him to come out this morning and quit. But have the succession of resignations today perhaps changed his mind? Well, we will see. But this press conference has been set now for four o'clock since... Uh, about midday today, we discussed how we were going to do it and so on and so forth. He did seem set on coming out later in the day, uh, perhaps just give himself a little bit more time uh, to think about it. The people I've spoken to here in Folkestone, interesting area this, uh, back in 2015, it, uh, UKIP came second here in the general election, but in 2017, uh, it uh, was very much a very low well, fourth. Now, so it could be and, that uh, uh, sure the people here have off. said, you know, it they're fairly mixed about it. Some say they should give him the benefit of the doubt that he doesn't share his girlfriend's views. Others say that uh, he should be responsible for the kind of things that his girlfriend has been sending out. Margot Parker, who was the East Midlands MEP, said that his personal life had taken over the job that he was elected to do. And she added it would be quicker and cleaner if he came to the conclusion that he could go sooner rather than later. It's taking time away from doing the job. It puts the party into a limbo situation. That was her view. Uh, and there's certainly people here in Folkestone who share that opinion 
as well. I know, Kay, you've uh, interviewed a few people today um, about his position, some people stepping down uh, from the party. But party members will be given a vote on whether Mr Bolton uh, should remain in the post if he decides to stay. But that is the big question. We will get that answered. I'm told in the next minute or so he should be coming out here. We were told he would come out at five past four. I think it is now five past four. So we should see him walking down here any minute now. But it seems as if the general view within a lot of his party is that he should step down. And that leaves wider questions, of course, for UKIP. As I said, they've been in trouble. The party is not uh, where it was. I guess it's high watermark point was obviously the Brexit vote back in 2016, but you think back only less than four years ago, they won the European elections in 2014, in May 2014. Uh, they obviously got an MP back then as well, with Douglas Carswell, their first uh, MP uh, in Clacton, which was a big success uh, for UKIP, um, as well as getting, of course, the Rochester Strood by election. But since then, I mean, if you look back to 2017 election, they got 594,000 votes in that general election, down 3.9 million from 2015. And they also suffered a net loss of 140 council seats across England in 2017. And UKIP's defending a further 126 council seats in May. I think if the party loses then, that would halve their current presence on English councils. So that would leave them in a very difficult position uh, politically. But I guess, you know, does this all come down to, you know, one text uh, from his girlfriend about Harry's ex uh, about? from his now ex-girlfriend, I should say, about uh, Prince Harry's fiancée, Meghan Markle, where she said that uh, he, she would be a taint on the royal family, considered racist by many people, and whether that is going to uh, be the impact. Now, I can just see someone giving us a thumbs up, which looks as if that means Henry Bolton is about to walk out. Well, that may have been a false alarm. We're looking at a, at a cameraman. Oh, who we can't, we can't uh, is perhaps <laughs> suggesting that he might have we gone the wrong way, could have come yeah, out the front you know, of the building rather than the back. Sort of we had, yeah, actually Bolton, sent him uh, photographs really of where to come to earlier so that he uh, knew where he was going to pitch up to do this uh, press conference. Um, he hasn't got any press officers with him. He's here on his own. I thought that might be an indication that he'd been abandoned by the party as well, but maybe not. Certainly his press officer told me that he intended to carry on uh, as the party leader. So a bit of confusion now about whether he's going to come out of this uh, door. This is the Grand Hotel in Folkestone. Uh, he doesn't actually stay in the Grand Hotel, but his apartment is literally just directly behind it. And a bit of trivia, there is on top of the Grand Hotel a flashing light which sends out a Morse code uh, which was put, installed by Yoko Ono. Um, and the Morse code is a signal of peace. But we've had no signals either way from Henry Bolton all day from inside his apartment just behind the Grand Hotel here. Still very much waiting to see what his decision is going to be. But my feeling is from the photographer standing down there that he has pretty much uh, decided that he is coming out now. He's downstairs at least and we should be hearing from him any moment now. I was just saying about the wider issue for UKIP really. Obviously, as I was saying, they've lost electoral uh, votes, they've yeah, lost that's, that's uh, council lost seats, all, uh, and they have lost to, um, uh, their purpose in many ways, having won the, uh, the, uh, the um, referendum vote. Uh, but it's a question of how they can reinvigorate the party now. And I think the problem is that when in the past they've been able to ride out uh, issues around racism and homophobic comments from candidates that they certainly had under Nigel Farage, uh, they were able to ride out of that because they seem to have a purpose. Now it becomes more difficult and now the party is floundering 
And on top of that, obviously, there's been suggestions that Nigel Farage may start up his own party, uh, backed by Aaron Banks, which would form a new kind of UKIP, a kind of UKIP that would press to get the kind of Brexit that Nigel Farage is looking to achieve, a harder Brexit than he feels he's going to get from uh, the, uh, the current uh, Conservative Party that's doing negotiations. So that is another threat to UKIP. Uh, a sense of lack of sense of purpose, a potential threat from its former leader. And there really are questions now. If Henry Bolton comes out here and resigns, there are questions over their survival, but equally there are questions over his survival if he stays on. Um, to say that we are just seeing via the uh, Reuters news agency, he has uh, issued a statement to Reuters saying he won't be resigning. What do you make of that then? Well, that, that would chime with what I was told by uh, the UKIP press officer only a few hours ago. I tweeted that it was looking like he wasn't going to resign. And when I spoke to Nigel Farage, Nigel Farage said he thought he would cling on, he would dig his heels in, with the words, and here he comes. Let's see if he's going to dig his heels in or he's going to resign. Sorry. Sorry. Come up to the microphone. A bit closer. Okay. Just, just, just come right up to the microphone, so we won't be able to hear. Are you all right here? Okay. Okay. Sorry to keep you all waiting. Um, ladies and gentlemen, yesterday the UKIP National Executive, Executive Committee decided to initiate and embark upon a constitutional course to remove me as leader of the party. I did advise at yesterday's meeting. I advised the NEC not to expose the party to the financial and political cost of that course of action. And that includes the political cost of possibly yet another leadership contest. I urged the NEC to focus instead upon the unity and cohesion of the party and on the need to concentrate on such matters as the local government election campaign and the necessity of mobilising our efforts to ensure that the government delivers a truly independent United Kingdom when we leave the European Union. Independence in all areas of governance and administration. I shall respect the next steps in the constitutional process and will therefore not be resigning as party leader. I shall repeat, I will not be re resigning as party leader. Instead, during the next four weeks, I shall be calling for the coordination and mobilisation of all leave campaigns to ensure that the government delivers full independence from the European Union in all areas of government and administration. And I shall be calling for the party itself to mobilise in order to support that effort. This is the most pressing matter facing our nation, and I am determined not to, not to allow the NEC to distract the party away from participating forcefully in the independence debate. Now, without reflecting at all on its individual members, the NEC, as presently constituted, is unfit for purpose and has severely handicapped the party's progress and political de delivery for some years, as recent UKIP leaders can attest. It has not only lost the confidence of me as the party leader in its ability to act objectively as the party's governing body, it has also lost the confidence of a large proportion of the party's membership. The NEC does require significant and urgent reform. To that end, again, during the coming weeks, I shall be proposing a new party constitution with a newly constituted and reformed National Executive Committee. Likewise, it is now time to put an end to the factional infighting that has been going on within the party for some time and to remove those who have been part of that. In a single phrase, it is time to drain the swamp. Let me reiterate, however, that the most pressing issue facing our country and UKIP is to ensure that we gain full independence from the European Union, that we do not allow the government to betray the country by compromising on that goal. That object is the object to which I shall be di directing all of my energies in the coming weeks. Thank you very much. Thank you. What, what do you say about the Mr. Balto, what do you say about what do you say about all the resignations of your party today? What about all the people no who have resigned? No comment. No comment. Uh yep. 
So we have just uh, lost that link for a moment or two, but basically we're hearing uh, what the leader of UKIP had to say. Uh, a lot of people had thought that he had no alternative but to uh, step down. That is certainly not the case as far as he is concerned. Uh, Henry Bolton saying, you know what, I am going to stay on. I'm going to continue as the leader of the party. Now it's up to the membership of UKIP to decide what happens next. Uh, only one member of the UKIP NEC decided that he should stay in post, and that was him. Uh, as far as the membership is concerned, they now have uh, 28 days to decide what should happen next. Let's see if we can bring back in Jason, should we? Hey, Jason, uh, he says he's staying, but he's a dead man talking, isn't he? Well, it's extraordinary, isn't it? He thinks that he has got the support of the party. So a lot of people have suggested that when it comes to the vote of the party members, that he could stay in place. It's a sort of Corbyn-esque style uh, approach to things, isn't it? When all of your top executives step down, uh, you say, well, stuff them, effectively. I think I've got the support of my party. The NEC uh, is not fit for purpose, is what he's saying. The National Executive Committee he says he's not fit for purpose. They say he's not fit for purpose. So it's a real face-off. And here he is uh, saying that we need to end the infighting within the party, but many would say that he is the cause of it. So I think I mentioned about three or four ironies just there in this whole event. And it really is showing to be a face-off between Henry Bolton, the man who currently leads UKIP, and the NEC and many of his top spokespeople, his deputy leader uh, and other MEPs, his spokesperson for trade, his spokesperson for immigration, all stepping down, saying he needs to resign. And he's saying, no, they've got it wrong. Uh, he needs to stay in place to bring what he sees as stability of a UKIP leadership at a crucial time in, of course, uh, the Brexit negotiations to make sure that they get the kind of Brexit that they feel UKIP voters uh, supported. But as I was saying before he came out, the number of UKIP voters, of course, have demised. The support for the party has demised. The number of councils they have, their political clout is disappearing around them. And they are imploding as a party, unable to agree with themselves on how they should go forward and who should lead them forward. And as I, uh, I think the camera broke up as I chased him up the uh, pathway there, just trying to get further comment from him on what was the point of him staying in place, how he felt about the various resignations throughout the day. He wasn't prepared uh, to talk about that. He was quickly back inside his apartment, having said what he felt uh, he wanted to say. I was told by his press officer that he was uh, not likely to take questions, uh, and indeed uh, he decided not to, just reading out that statement there. So he's going to stay, he's going to fight on. OK, for now, thank you. Let's bring in Matthew Goodwin, Professor of Politics and International Relations at Kent University. Hello to you, Professor. He's staying on. Well, it's another remarkable day in UKIP land. Uh, this is a party that's gone through nearly three leaders in 18 months or 14 leaders over 25 years. It's always a volatile world. And now I think there's a real crunch moment coming, Kay, because uh, Bolton is now going to throw this to the membership of the party. They're going to have to vote within, 20, within around 28 days to either endorse that vote of no confidence that was given by the... Uh, parties NEC, or they could oppose that and voice their loyalty to Henry Bolton. So another fascinating few weeks ahead. But the NEC presumably is elected to represent those that are members of the party. In theory, and so you might expect uh, members to follow the lead of the NEC and perhaps vote to uh, bring a very early end to uh, Henry Bolton's leadership. But the only thing that's in my mind here is that this issue is actually bigger than Henry Bolton. Every recent UKIP leader, um, from Nigel Farage to uh, Henry Bolton, has complained about the National Executive Committee, saying it's not fit for purpose, it's not flexible enough. And in his statement there, Bolton did hint at his desire to reform the internal structures of UKIP, something that Nigel Farage has always talked about. Perhaps, who knows, perhaps there might be a a quiet alliance here between the former leader and the current leader in trying to push through uh, some radical party reforms. But let's see. Um, I believe they're having a bit of a ch chin wag on the radio a bit later on, actually, so it'll be interesting to see what they uh, have to say when that happens. 
Um, it, it, you know, we hear what you say, we hear what he says about the NEC, but when every single member has voted against him and at least half of his uh, shadow cabinet, if you will, um, has stepped down, it, despite what he's saying, it's going to be tough to hold on. Oh, absolutely. And I, I you know, my, my hunch here is that Bolton will, will almost certainly go at some point. And that introduces an intriguing question, which is, well, what happens to UKIP then? Is there another disruptive leadership election? Does the party finally accept that maybe this is the end of the road? Does Nigel Farage set up a new alternative party? Do UKIPers try and perhaps stage a momentum on the right by infiltrating the Conservative grassroots associations trying to push the Conservatives to a hard Brexit. You know, we don't know, OK, where this tradition, this hard Eurosceptic tradition in British politics is going to go. And it, it will go somewhere. And I think following this is going to be interesting. Are they a spent force? Well, look, you never write off uh, a party that only a couple of years ago was the third most popular party in the country. Yeah, but that's Let's the point, what... though, Professor, isn't it? They, they were a couple of years ago, the third most popular party in the country. Now, where are they? Well, uh, you, I suppose you could argue they got everything they wanted. They got the referendum, they got the vote for Brexit. Now, of course, they're all watching the Brexit negotiations and the big dividing line in British politics now that runs through the Conservatives, runs through Labour, runs through UKIP, is what is that Brexit deal going to be? Is it going to be a soft Brexit deal, which will enrage the UKIPers, will enrage some of the uh, Conservatives on the right of the party? Or will it be a hard Brexit deal, a sort of end to freedom of movement, end to ECJ jurisdiction? And that will please the UKIPers and those on the right of the Conservatives. Now, one thing that I would never do, Kay, given the history of British politics over the last five years, if not 20 years, is underestimate the potency of social conservatism in Britain because mm -hmm. it has caused some pretty radical political change. Yep, I completely agree. And we've seen lots of um, smaller parties come up and, and seem to be the next political force. I'm thinking about the SDLP and the like. Uh, and yet... We still find ourselves with just the two main parties. Well, indeed, we do. Uh, I think what was fascinating about the election in June uh, and also the 2015 election is if you look back over the last 50, 60 years of British elections, those two elections either side of the referendum were actually the most volatile in history. More people switched between different parties than ever before. Labour went Conservative, UKIPers went Conservative, some Conservative went Labour, some Lib Dems went Labour. We've got all of this churn and change going on underneath the surface of British politics. And that is what makes it completely unpredictable. We have no idea what's going to happen at the next election. We have no idea, really, what's going to happen at things like local elections and by-elections. It's really a chaotic uh, time. But that was because, oh, this is fascinating, uh, that was because people were um, casting their vote on a particular issue as opposed to being tribal, wasn't it? Well, indeed. I mean, this, what I think is the interesting thesis about Britain now is we are partially through a realignment. We're like halfway through the whole system being realigned. What was fascinating at the election was Labour did so well among graduates and middle class professionals. Places like Canterbury, where I teach, for example, it went Labour for the first time since Gladstone. But the Conservatives had one of their best elections among the working class pretty much since the early days of Margaret Thatcher, if not of all time. Wow. So we're seeing these things that we've just never seen before in British politics. Uh, and I think that's what makes it really exciting. And we could be, and I say could, we could be on the cusp of a full-blown realignment in British politics, where you Absolutely. see the Conservatives mopping up the workers sure. and Labour mopping up the middle-class Liberals. Absolutely fascinating. We're out of time, Professor, but do come back and talk to us about it in more detail soon. Uh, riveting Thanks, stuff. Kate. Thank you. The UKIP leader, Henry Bolton, says he won't quit despite a dozen members of the party's front bench resigning in protest over his relationship with his ex-girlfriend. She's apologised after being accused of sending racist text messages. Our political correspondent, Leila Nathu, is in Folkestone, where Mr Bolton made a short statement this afternoon. He was absolutely adamant he wasn't going. That's right, Sophie. Henry Bolton was bullish when he emerged from this hotel behind me earlier in defiance of those within his party who were calling for him to stand down over this episode concerning his now ex-girlfriend. UKIP's ruling body has met and decided to vote a, no a vote of no confidence in him last night and now a dozen members of his top team have resigned. But today, Henry Bolton insisted he was going nowhere, saying it was time to end the infighting within the party, time to drain the swamp, he said, uh, using Donald Trump's phrase. He wants to reform 
party structures and he's uh, banking on the support of enough party members to keep him in place when they meet in a few weeks time to decide his fate. In the meantime, a statement that many hoped would help UKIP move on from this latest turmoil has instead risked deepening its divisions. Leila Nathu, thank you. The embattled leader of UKIP is still clinging to power tonight. Henry Bolton refuses to stand down despite a wave of resignations within his party over racist texts sent by his former girlfriend. At a brief news conference this afternoon, Mr Bolton was defiant, insisting it is the governance of UKIP that needs to change and not him. Seven senior party members quit today after the executive committee backed a vote of no confidence in him. But as Angus Walker reports, the UKIP leader insists he is not leaving, he is remaining. Emerging from a hotel in Folkestone, the UKIP leader Henry Bolton, a former army officer, refusing to surrender. And will therefore not be resigning as party leader. I shall repeat, I will not be re resigning as party leader. Instead, he declared war on his own party. I shall be proposing a new party constitution with a newly constituted and reformed National Executive Committee. Likewise, it is now time to put an end to the factional infighting that has been going on within the party for some time and to remove those who have been part of that. In a single phrase, it is time to drain the swamp. But it's Henry Bolton who's been bogged down in scandal after racist messages sent by his girlfriend, Jo Marnie, were made public. Is your relationship with her over? I'm not making any comment. The outcry led to a unanimous vote of no confidence by the party's national executive and a mutiny within UKIP's senior ranks. Seven more resignations from key party jobs today. More than a dozen have quit their posts since last week amid a chorus of calls for Henry Bolton to go. I'm surprised that he, he doesn't realise that the, the vast majority of the party uh, doesn't want him to stay. He's caused this almighty problem and my plea to Henry is, look, you've taken a good kicking over the last couple of weeks. Why don't you get out of politics? The old adage is when you're in a hole stop digging and the fact of the matter is that uh, Mr Bolton has become the story and not what we have to say to the British people. <laughs> During the referendum campaign with Nigel Farage at the helm UKIP were on the crest of a political wave but since the Brexit vote support for UKIP has been sinking fast reflected in poor election results and a succession of different leaders over the last 18 months has made the party appear rudderless and at risk of drifting towards irrelevance. Henry Bolton's last-ditch defence of his position as leader now depends on the party's 24,000 members. They'll be asked to vote on his future within the next three to four weeks. OK, Angus, so Henry Bolton's hanging on, but for how long? Yes, and the question must be as well, how long can UKIP hang on? Because Henry Bolton himself says that if there is another leadership election, then the party maybe financially cannot cope with the cost and the resources needed to actually choose another leader. Extraordinary defiance from a party leader today to come out swinging after he lost the confidence of the national executive, which is meant to represent the membership. I haven't spoken to a single party figure today who's offered their support to Henry Bolton, including MEPs and donors and activists uh, and members up and down the country. So he is in an extraordinary position. Now, interestingly, in about half an hour, he's on a live radio show hosted by none other, none other than Nigel Farage. Could it be that he's about to be thrown a lifeline by the former UKIP leader? Angus Walker at Westminster, thank you. So certain, he repeated it. Henry Bolton has declared he won't resign as UKIP leader despite a series of key party figures quitting in protest. Unbowed by yesterday's vote of no confidence, Mr Bolton insisted today he would fight on, declaring the party's ruling body needed significant and urgent reform. Our political correspondent Michael Crick was there and joins us from Folkestone now. Michael. Yes, Christian. Well, yesterday afternoon, as you were saying, the UKIP National Executive Committee voted unanimously that they had no confidence in Henry Bolton. I say unanimously, there was one vote in his favour, and that was Mr Bolton himself. And yesterday and today, a whole string of party spokesmen 
Uh, people have been losing count of the numbers. It's about 16. Eight of them today, including the party deputy leader, uh, Margot Parker, have resigned in protest at Mr Bolton's uh, leadership, urging him uh, to go. He was silent all day until just after four o'clock this afternoon when he emerged from the hotel behind me where he uh, owns a flat and uh, delivered this statement. I shall respect the next steps in the constitutional process and will therefore not be resigning as party leader. I shall repeat, I will not be re resigning as party leader. So he's fighting on not just for his leadership. He's fighting on not just for his leadership. He's made it clear he's now going on the offensive against the national executive, declaring that he himself has no confidence in the national executive and that he's going to take measures against them. The NEC does require significant and urgent reform. To that end, again, during the coming weeks, I shall be proposing a new party constitution with a newly constituted and reformed National Executive Committee. Likewise, it is now time to put an end to the factional infighting that has been going on within the party for some time and to remove those who have been part of that. In a single phrase, it is time to drain the swamp. So what happens next is that UKIP hold an extraordinary general meeting. They've got to do that within 28 days. It's thought that's likely to take place on the 17th of February, probably or possibly in Derby. So in the meantime, Mr Bolton is not just defending his leadership, shoring it up, trying to get the votes together at that meeting of ordinary party members. He's also going to go out, he's going to write a new constitution, he's going to come up with new proposals to reform uh, the National Executive Committee. Why is he doing this? He appeared tonight on LBC Radio. He was actually interviewed by one of his predecessors, his most famous predecessor, Nigel Farage, who at one point suggested that he might be being selfish by carrying on. Mr Bolton said no, he was carrying on because the National Executive were just 14 Jones, people and yet he himself was elected by 4,000 people only last September and that's why he's carrying on. Thanks, Michael. Well, joining me now is Liz Jones. She stood for leader of UKIP in 2016 and sits on UKIP's National Executive Committee. Um, why does he have to go? I mean, pe people may forget that this all started with some text messages from the woman he was in a relationship with, uh, who has since been uh, suspended by the party, that were racist text messages. Why does he have to go? Because of his girlfriend's texts. It's not so much about the girlfriend's text. It's not about the detail of the situation. It's about his inability to manage the situation and the media. And this is a small part of the disappointing leadership we have experienced from um, Henry. For instance, um, while our Welsh AM, Gareth Bennett, uh, was barred from speaking on the Senate for uh, making various comments uh, about um, transgender people, uh, we heard nothing from Henry. He gave no support. There was no press release. There was no um, public uh, backing of Gareth. You think position. you should have fought that one? Well, he, he, Gareth is uh, a UKIP elected member of the Wales Assembly. He should have been there and said, of course, Gareth should be allowed to speak. He shouldn't be barred for one year for, say, for saying what he said. Now, uh, so, that, so, the situation has changed and Gareth is now uh, allowed to speak. Yeah. The Senate has Let, Let's not get into that. Let's go into the details. I mean, the, the point is, are you saying you think, given a choice, UKIP members on this very important issue will yes. change their minds? No. Uh, when you say change their minds... Well, they won't elect Henry Bolton again. They will not elect Henry so Bolton So they will change again. their minds, is what Sorry, I'm yeah. uh, no. I'm coming from the point of view that I have been bombarded emails, text messages, phone calls from members around the country asking for his removal. Furthermore, the regions have also had votes to decide whether he should go, and overwhelmingly overwhelmingly the membership has voted for his removal all right well well of course so henry bolton says that he's being overwhelmed by support from the from the from the party membership Let, let's talk now well, we to haven't seen richard that. Pa well we let's just talk to one one, one yeah, person sure. who's richard palmer who is a henry bolton supporter from the sittingbourne branch um why are you saying he should stay when he's clearly making a mockery of your party no, I don't think he's making a mockery. I think 
I think for the last two or three years there's been problems with the NEC making decisions and a lot of members have called for the scrapping of the NEC. What I'm concerned about is I joined because of democracy. That's why I got involved with UKIP. And I feel that if you're going to face judgment, I'm asking a simple question. What is he being charged with and where's the evidence? And if they can produce that, then members can make a reasoned decision. If they can't produce that to the members, we're having trial by social media. And I don't think that's appropriate for any, any organisation, particularly a political party that believes in the rule of law, the Magna Carta and all them sort of things. So do you think things. it should stand so again if there's another leadership like... election? Well, um, I would say if the members don't vote for him to stay, then I would say it would be very awkward to stand again in a leadership election. But I think, I look at this in two ways. The NEC has made a decision and are saying to the members, will you support the NEC's decision? I look at it as a vote, maybe, of confidence in the NEC, because can they provide the evidence? What letter did they send to Mr Bolton saying, these are the charges against you, can you come and answer them? Because if they haven't let him know the charges, how can he defend himself? And if the public don't know the charges or the members don't know the charges, how, 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 how can the members make a reasoned decision? Okay. So I'm asking the NEC to release the evidence, release what the charges were, so that the members can look at the evidence, can look at the charges, and can make a reasoned, informed decision All right. to either... Which, which, which may be different to the other one. Again, Henry that's Bolton. interesting that you think people could change their minds on such an important matter. Richard Palmer, thank you for well, joining us uh, for that. L Liz Jones, do you think... There's something going on here, you know, that, that UKIP may be at the end of the road and that a new party may be being fermented, perhaps involving Nigel Farage. That may be the case. I think it's highly unlikely. Uh, I think that UKIP will continue. It's got a very, very strong brand. It's achieved uh, its main goal. We've got plenty more policies to come up with. We are concerned about the decentralisation of power. And there is a lot more that UKIP needs to do. Uh, there are new parties springing up all over the place. So do you think there might be a rival sort of UKIP too? Son of UKIP, well, there, daughter of UKIP, whatever. Uh, there is possibly. I know there's been talk that Aaron Banks and Nigel Farage uh, would be uh, supportive of that. But it's extremely difficult to get new political parties up and running and popular. I don't think that it's going to succeed. Don't forget, we've had a slew of leadership elections. In the last lead leadership election, we had two of the contenders, namely John rees Evans. He's gone off and set up his own party, Affinity. And, of course, we had Anne-Marie Waters, as you know. She's gone off and set up her own party for Britain. So we've got two new parties arising from the previous leadership election. And now uh, maybe, Nigel maybe and Aaron... Maybe a third. Maybe Chris a third. Jones, thank you very much indeed. Well, having talked about defence, we can turn to war now, as that is where UKIP finds itself at. The leader, Henry Bolton, is not resigning. He came out just after four this afternoon to tell us that. But 14 or 15 of his senior colleagues, we've literally lost count, have quit their roles because they want him to go. The party's National Executive Committee had already voted no confidence in him, but Mr Bolton chose not to bow to the pressure and instead promised to take on the party apparatchiks. He said he'd drain the swamp. Well, John Sweeney has been following today's UKIP developments. This happy breed of men, this little world, this precious stone is now bound in with shame, with inky blots and rotten parchment bonds. That UKIP, that was wont to conquer others, hath made a shameful conquest of itself. Four years ago, UKIP won more votes than any other party in the European elections, eventually forcing David Cameron's hand to call the Brexit referendum. I will go to Parliament and propose that the British people decide our future in Europe through an in-out referendum on Thursday the 23rd of June. That one, frontman Nigel Farage quit. Diane James was Queen of UKIP for 18 days. 
Then came Paul Nuttall, who fell after the party got a drubbing in the general election. Next Keeper-in-Chief, Henry Bolton. The former army trooper made a splash when he said he could kill a badger with his own hands. When it came out that he left his Russian wife for a model half his age, that was bad. When she was found to have tweeted racist claptrap about Prince Harry's bride-to-be, Meghan Markle, that was bad, bad. Despite a wave of resignations, today Mr Bolton put his foot down. I shall respect the next steps in the constitutional process and will therefore not be resigning as party leader. I shall repeat, I will not be re resigning as party leader. It is now time to put an end to the factional infighting that has been going on within the party for some time and to remove those who have been part of that. In a single phrase, it is time to drain the swamp. This swamp dweller disagrees. Well, I think it's a foolish decision. I've no reason to believe that the party will support him. In fact, I think he will go down to an overwhelming defeat, which will add further humiliation to his recent experiences. I think it's all very sad. You know, we tried the men in grey suits. Uh, perhaps it's now time for the men in white coats. I don't know. He seems to me to have lost all touch with reality. The troubled leader went looking for a shoulder to cry on and tonight found anything but. You, Henry Bolton, have turned this into a soap opera and in doing so have brought the party into disrepute. I wouldn't agree with that, Nigel. Interestingly, at the NEC meeting yesterday, uh, there wasn't one charge uh, laid against me apart from that I had left my wife. What does Henry Bolton do if it all goes wrong next month? Oh, uh, you know, across that bridge when I come to it. I mean, I'm still going to be uh, campaigning solidly. Uh, I'm not going to go away in that respect. Uh, no way, no form. Henry Bolton can't last long, so Focus returns to the party's once and perhaps future king. Someone once said of Nigel Farage, he doesn't just want to be the bride at the wedding, but also the corpse at the funeral. With UKIP going the way it is, he may well get his wish. Well, I can speak to uh, Suzanne Evans, former deputy chairwoman of UKIP and a former leadership candidate herself, in fact, for the party. Very good evening to you. Um, what happens if Henry Bolton doesn't go, do you think? I really wish he would, as I think do the majority of members in UKIP. He really has brought the party into disrepute. Uh, and it's not just about his uh, the fact he left his wife and very young children, uh, the fact that he's taken up with a, with, a, with a woman who is younger than his eldest daughter. There is actually a little bit more to it than that. The membership feels very strongly that they've been misled from the start about the nature of this relationship. And uh, NEC members, too, have pointed out that it wasn't just about his his personal life and the, the chaos that that's brought to the party but it is about other things as well uh, one NEC member today saying you know it was about his mishandling of events his political naivety negligence in his role missed deadlines and political ineptitude um, so I, I really do wish he'd go as I say as do most other people I think this this whole farce that we're now going to have an emergency general meeting which is going to cost time and money at which I fear he's going to be humiliated it just seems like a pointless attempt to cling what? on to, to what really what? He ha he's lost the faith the support of everybody why don't you leave UKIP and join the Conservatives out of interest <laughs> Look, I, I think there's very much a role for UKIP in, in public life. You know, I think people today have been very keen to try and say that UKIP's finished. But this is UKIP's 25th year. And there probably hasn't been a single year in which someone somewhere hasn't said, oh, UKIP's finished, it's, it's, it's history, it's all over. You know, we're still polling um, above the Green Party. Uh, just last week, we uh, came, tripled the, had tripled the Lib Dem vote in a, an, uh, a local election, uh, by-election in, in Bolton. I don't think anyone's talking about the demise of the Lib Dems Look, and the Green Party. The extraordinary thing is, is that you just don't seem to get on with each other. I, I'm, I'm blown if I can find any kind of policy difference between you all. It seems to be totally personal. What is it about UKIP people that has made this party so dysfunctional over the last couple of years, do you think? 
Well, you know, when I, my first years in UKIP were actually uh, a great, it was a honeymoon period, I suppose, if you like. And I really do trace this back to 2015, when Nigel Farage failed to get elected in Thanet South, as he desperately wanted to do, uh, seemed to throw all his toys out of the pram. There was this this disastrous resignation and unresignation, uh, which, which uh, again, brought the party into disrepute and lost us credibility. And then he seemed to start waging war on anybody in the party who was any good at anything. Uh, so I kind of look at it from, from there, really, and it's been a downhill, downhill uh, all, all the way. And I think it's a bit rich of Henry to talk about you know, kicking out people who've been involved in, in infighting. Well, he'd be, probably be kicking yeah. out quite a lot of people, including Nigel Farage and himself. Well, it'll make a great episode of The Reunion one day. Suzanne Evans, thank you very much uh, indeed.